Good morning to everybody again, and good morning to everybody on Zoom. I wanted to read again from Matthew chapter 20. Last Sunday, we had read a story here from Matthew 20 as well. You remember the, the request that James and John's mother had brought to, to Jesus. And uh, so today we want to we want to read the, the the passage directly following that. So that's Matthew chapter 20 and verse 29. I'll start reading in verse 29. <clears throat> now, as they went out of Jericho, a great multitude followed him, and behold, two blind men sitting by the road. When they heard that Jesus was passing by, cried out, saying, Have mercy on us, O Lord, Son of David. Then the multitude warned them that they should be quiet. But they cried out all the more, saying, Have mercy on us, O Lord, Son of David. So Jesus stood still and called them and said, what do you want me to do for you? They said to him, Lord, that our eyes may be opened. So Jesus had compassion and touched their eyes, and immediately their eyes received sight, and, and they followed him. So I was thinking about that when I picked that song and, and said what I did about the, about the light in that song, O Love That Will Not not let me go but what what is happening here in this in this story and when you read a story it's it's sometimes insightful to to think to reflect on which of the which of the characters are you who are you in in the story are you are you the blind man blind man there was two of them are you the the bystanders who tried to um, keep them from coming to Jesus or, or who are you or are you or are you even a different person in the story are you some kind of hero that that uh, comes in and, and helps the blind man um, come to Jesus well you can think about that a bit but I I would suggest that we are the blind men in in this account we are the blind men and we are the ones that that need to need to be given need to be given sight there's there's about three three main um, ideas or points that, that I would like to make from this passage, but let's reflect a little bit first on, on what is happening. So these two men, they're sitting along the road, and what are they doing? Well, they're, they're begging, they're probably begging for, for money because they're poor, they're blind, they can't uh, hold a job most likely, so they're begging for, for money or for food or for, or for anything that could, that could help them in their in their condition, anything that could aid their their survival, they're they're just they're just surviving from from day to day, and some somehow they knew somehow they knew that that passing that Jesus was passing by, and of course it wasn't something they had seen because they're blind men. Somehow they had heard that a person was coming, though their physical eyes were unseeing, their hearts had somehow seen had somehow grasped this truth. That the one who was going to be passing by was was the Messiah, and they cr and they cried out, "Have mercy on us, O Lord, Son of David!" And this, I didn't dig too deep into this, but the the term the the Son of David is a term that is linked to to the Messiah. Son of David is a title deeply associated with with the Messiah, and. So the, the first the first point I wanted to make is that is about is in relation to physical handicaps. That physical handicaps oftentimes are not the hindrance that they may seem. Physical handicaps may not be the hindrance that they may seem. And oftentimes when when a sense when a sense is missing for them, their sight was missing, when a sense is myth, is missing, one is missing, that another is compensated for, another one is another one is stronger. And so 
we who have our full five senses, who have our sight, we can think what a hindrance it would be if we were if we were blind or what a hindrance it would be if we couldn't speak or or what a hindrance it would be if we were missing any of our any of our five of our five senses. But so that's the first point that physical handicaps oftentimes are not the hindrance that, that they may seem. And this is a perfect example. Their physical eyes were unseeing and yet with their heart they had saw something, they had heard something, and they had um, understood that he who was passing by was not just a, a regular person. Their physical eyes were blind, but their ears were sharp, and they had heard enough to know that this was not a person to ask only for money or bread. This was not a person to ask only for a scrap, only for a crumb. Somehow they had seen that, no, this was a person that was capable of extending mercy and capable of extending healing and capable of, of doing something for them that had never been done before. And that was to transform their, their entire existence and to bring them and to bring them healing, to change their entire condition. And that's my second point. And that is, how do we pray? How do we pray? So the second point is ask for big things. Ask for big things no matter what others say. Ask for big things no matter what others say. And they, they cried out, Son of David, have, have mercy on us. And there were these other people who were, who were getting in the way in verse 31. The multitude was, was warning them and, and crying out that, that they, should, they should be quiet. But they cried out all the more, Have mercy on us, Lord, Son of David. So when we pray, do we, do we realize who it is that we are coming to? And are we, are we willing to ask, ask in faith, ask for those big things, no matter what, what the others are saying, oh, quiet down, don't be so, don't make such a ruckus, oh, don't make such, a, don't make such a, uh, a scene, but do we realize who it is that we are coming to, or are we, or are we still blind in some, in some way? And so the, the, the reflection that I'd like to offer right now is, Last week we were talking about the the request that James and John brought, and and how 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 are, how are these different? So, and at that point Jesus said, "What do you wish?" And today he says, "What what would you that I would? What do you want me to do for you?" Is his line today? What what do you want me to do for you? And last week he didn't give the request. This week he gives the request that was asked, and. It, it seems like when we when we come to when we come to our king with with petitions when we come to our king with 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 um, with our needs and and is it is it not according to our faith and according to our need that we come so what they asked they wanted to have this important place next to next to um, in the kingdom, they wanted to sit one on the left hand, one on the right. And Jesus said, no, I, I, I can't give you that. The only thing that I can promise you is that, is that you're going you're gonna to have to drink the cup that I drink. You're going to have to be baptized with the baptism that I'm baptized with. But, but when these men came, and out of, a, out of a deep sense of need and out of, a, out of faith, I believe sincere faith, that he was the Messiah. Somehow their hearts had, had, had embraced that. They could see that even though their physical eyes were blind. And they, they said, what did they say? Lord, that our eyes may be open. So that's our, that's our second point. Ask for big things. Don't matter what others, what others say. Um, of, of course, are we coming for, and are we asking for self, um, for selfish reasons? Or are we asking out of a, out of a place of, of real need and, and, and faith and belief and who it is that we are actually coming to and who, we, who it is that we are bringing our, our petitions to? <clears throat> it was sight they sought and sight they, rec they received. And an admission of blindness is prerequisite for receiving our sight. So do we, do we recognize that we may have blind spots ourselves? We may have things that we don't see and are we willing to admit that and say, Lord, you know, 
he's saying, to, there's a sense where he is saying to us today, you know, what is it that you, what is it that you want me to do for you? And Lord, that we could have our eyes, eyes opened and Lord, that we could have clear vision of, of what it is that, that uh, you want for us. So many, many people around them with perfectly good eyesight were missing the fact that Jesus was the Messiah. And we saw that in, in John 6. The other night we were reading in John 6. Some of you weren't there, but... And um, it talked about those that, had, those that had seen and had seen him physically, and yet they went back and walked no longer with him. And, and then, of course, we think of the other verse in relation to Thomas and his response. Jesus said that, Blessed are those that have not seen him, and, and yet, they, yet they believe. So for these, for these two men, for these two blind men who were sitting along the road there, it was true what it says in Romans 10.17. So that faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. Though their physical eyes were blind, yet with their, their eye of faith, their heart of faith, they had seen who Jesus was. And again, some more thoughts about, about the handicap aspect of it. How, how often... Do people with, with healthy bodies and all of their senses intact, how often do, do, they, do they miss some important truth? How often, how often do they miss something, something important? Because they, they need others less. They have all their senses. They don't, I don't need to rely on on someone to be my eyes or someone to be my ears or someone to be my, my my sense of smell or to lead me about. They need others less. They can have they can have too much confidence in their own abilities. Could it be then that those who lack one of the senses, could it be that those who lack one of the physical senses are the blessed ones? And we the ones with all of our senses are the blind ones. How does one with twenty twenty vision, you know what that is? It's good eyesight. How does one with 20, 20 vision learn to live according to 2 Corinthians 5, verse 7? What does that say? What well, it says, for we walk by faith and not by sight. How do we learn with 20, 20 vision, how do we learn to walk by faith and, and not by sight? So what might be some of the obstacles that, that we, or blind spots that, that we have? things that we have difficulty seeing. There's sometimes our heart might be saying, you know, amen, uh, so be it. You know, I, I believe this to be true, but we have this resistance. We have some kind of resistance to, 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 res to fully embracing or fully obeying that which we, we know with our mind to be true, but we're, we're slow to embrace for, for whatever reasons. And, and so may our, may our, May our blind spots be be open today. May our eyes be open in a in a fuller in a fuller sense today. And the third point I wanted to make was was just a reflection on there's a there's, there's another another layer or another way you can look at this you can look at this story and and that is that it is future promise and we kind of hinted at this already a little bit but it's a future promise for for the for the blind people remember i said in the beginning that who are we in the story we're the blind people and we're the we're the two blind men we're the ones that in future generation did not physically see him did not see him with our physical eyes and yet like as it says in scripture that they shall all be taught of god and that we are those that did not see with our physical eyes and yet we have been blessed to have been taught of God and blessed to have been given this this teaching and and our our eyes have have been opened I, I believe that we have we by faith we have come to to see that Jesus is the Messiah and you know it's possible that we still have blind spots we do but may our prayer this morning be that our blind spots would would be touched and and that uh, and that our eyes, those of us that have good eyes, those of us that have 20-20 eyes, that our eyes would be an aid to faith and not to doubt. So I was thinking about this song. Um, 
don't know if we can sing this one or not, but do you, know, do you all know the song, Open the Eyes of My Heart, Lord? So hopefully there'll be enough that know it, that can keep, that can carry it. Um, yeah, let's sing that song. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart. I want to see you. I want to see you. To see you high and lifted up. Shining my Pour out your power and love. It's, I'm sure it's a beautiful song, even more beautiful if we had had it perfectly, but um, why don't we stop with that? Let's, uh, let's stand together. Father, we thank you for this time that we can come together. And Lord, we, we pray that uh, you would open our eyes to, to behold new things out of, your, out of your law today. We, we believe it's, it's very possible that, that we could have blind spots. and We ask you to lay your, lay your finger on them today and, and open our eyes to see a new vision of, of your glory a new vision of, of your kingdom, a new perspective on, on our place that you've, you've called us to, to be as, as sons and as daughters in this, in this world. And so we ask that you would instruct us from your, from your word and bless our time together here today and ask direction on the further meeting. I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, you can sit down.